All right, everybody, it's Sunday, January 17th, Couch Church. Welcome. Good morning. I love that awkward silence. Can I get a good morning from you guys? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, the two people that said good morning back to the TV or the device you're watching. Uh, we're, it's a new year, 2021, and it's already off to a crazy start if you've been watching the news. But we want to... Um, continue with a brand new series on baptism. We're going to be talking about baptism, the gift of baptism for the next few weeks. And what I hope uh, is accomplished through this next series of teaching and preaching is that you, if you're baptized already in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, that you would receive kind of this new felt appreciation for the gift that you've been given, that God has connected with you personally, individually, that you have a living relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, that you would have an, a new appreciation for that in the gift of your baptism. Second of all, if you're hearing this message and you're watching online and you're unbaptized, you're not baptized, but you want to learn more, keep watching this, this series of, of videos as well, if you're, if you're wanting to decide to receive the gift of baptism and you're in the Lethbridge area, don't hesitate to look us up, contact us by email or by phone. We'd be happy to talk to you with you further about what it means to be baptized. Or if you're not in the Lethbridge area and you're hearing this message and you're feeling the call to be baptized and you want to become a follower of Christ, uh, again, reach out to us, and then perhaps we can get you in touch with a local church uh, that would make sense for you to connect with. All right, God be with you this week, uh, and thanks for joining us for Couch Church this morning at Emmanuel Lutheran Church here in Lethbridge. Uh, it's often a custom of ours to begin our worship in the name in which we're baptized. So every Sunday when we gather together, we actually recall the fact that we are baptized children of God. So let's do that now. We begin in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your worship today. Blood of Jesus 
as you wait for the crowd Tell the world of the treasure you found Every week now during this series on baptism I want to invite you to pray with me it's a prayer of remembrance of our baptism. And so I invite you to pray with me now. Let's pray. Lord God, I am your child. I call you Father because you are my Father. You named me with your own holy name even before I could speak. You made me your own before I could move a hand to help or prevent you. You insisted on having me even though you knew the end of my life as well as its beginning its shame as well as its glory, its failures as well as its achievements, its bad as well as its good. Why, Father, should I persist in resisting you? Why should I insist on my own way instead of knowing your way of grace and love? Why should I obey my own whims instead of letting your grace and baptism have its way with me? Forgive me, Father, for so often wandering into a far country away from you, your forgiveness, your joy, your promises, your love in Jesus Christ. Help me to live in the freedom of my baptism as your son or as your daughter in the life which you daily renew by your gracious forgiveness. I am baptized. I belong to you, God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. So we'll pray that prayer every week as we recall the blessings that we have in our baptism, how God connects with us through his word. Uh, the readings today from God's word, first one is from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 11. St. Paul writes this about baptism. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin how can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we've died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. The second reading is Mark chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. Uh, Mark, Mark's account in the Gospels talks about Jesus' baptism. It says this, And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me, comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Uh, these are the readings we're going to focus on today for our message. Hey, boys and girls, it's Pastor Lee. Welcome to Couch Church. 
If you're watching this with mom and dad, or maybe you're watching it with mom, or maybe you're watching this with dad, or maybe you're watching this with the whole family, tell your moms and dads or whoever you're watching this with to go get a refill on their coffee right now. Let's just spend a couple minutes together, us together, okay? Uh, I got thinking about Jesus' baptism. What an amazing day that must have been. And it reminded me of a story about Michael. Michael's in kindergarten, and he's five years old, and he's so happy to be in school, and their class had a plan to welcome all their moms and dads to the classroom one day. Well, what they did to get ready for their visit was to each draw or paint or color a picture of an animal. It could be any animal. It could be a pet. It could be an animal in the zoo. It could be an animal they've seen out in the wild, maybe at a national park or when they were camping or something like that. Well, here's the picture that Michael drew for their class to get ready for mom and dad's visit to the classroom. It's a picture of their dog. And I love this picture. Uh, Michael posted it on the bulletin board along with all the other pictures that were made by his classmates. Well, that day finally came where mom and dad visited the classroom and Michael's dad looked at the bulletin board where all the pictures were posted and he immediately pointed to this picture. He said, that's my son's picture. My son's Michael. And then he points over at Michael. He says, that's my son. I'm so proud of him. Well, when Jesus was baptized, it was like God wanted to tell everybody that was his son. God wanted to make sure everyone knew how pleased he was with his one and only son, Jesus. You see, Jesus was uh, baptized in a river called the Jordan River, and one of God's helpers, his name was John, baptized Jesus. And it says, that when Jesus came out of the water, he was baptized in the river. Uh, When Jesus came out of the water, it says the Holy Spirit came down from heaven in the form of a dove. Now, we're at the baptism font of the church where we baptize people of all ages, boys and girls and men and women. And uh, you can see this wood carving of this dove. It's a symbol of the power of, of the Holy Spirit. And then it says, when the Holy Spirit came down from heaven and and came upon Jesus, there was a voice from heaven that was heard also, and it said, this is my son, whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. I'm so pleased with my son. Uh, And this is what happened on the day that Jesus was baptized. God wanted everybody to know that was around the Jordan River that day, that Jesus was his very own son and that he was pleased with him. Now, this is good news for you and for me, boys and girls. You can know for sure that God loves you because Jesus is God's very own son. And so when you're baptized, and I know many of you are listening in and some of you aren't, and you'll be baptized one day, It's God's way of telling you, you're my son, you're my daughter, I love you, I am so pleased with you, I'm so happy that you're my son, that you're my daughter, my heavenly son, my heavenly daughter. Uh, That day when you were baptized, and for those of you who aren't baptized but want to be, talk to your moms and dads about this, the pastor, on the day you were baptized... He took real water and he poured that water over you and he said, I baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And at that very moment, you receive the good news that you are God's Son, that you are the daughter of God, and that he loves you and he will never leave you. Let's pray about that. Let's give thanks for the gift of baptism today. Let's pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, thank you for your gift of baptism. Thank you for forgiving the many things we do wrong each day. Thank you for taking our sin to the cross. And thank you for making us your very own dear children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us, boys and girls. I hope you have a great day. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, 
in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we are gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace, hear the joyful sound of our offering, as your saints bow down, as your people sing, we will rise with you. All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, for the next few weeks, we are gonna focus on the gift of baptism. And I thought we'd start here. Uh, we're gonna put up a couple pictures for you to look at. Uh, maybe you've seen these pictures work their way through social media. They're the pictures of pastors with water guns standing at a distance from, from a baby. And it's supposed to picture a social distancing baptism. And I love these pictures. You can never be too careful these days. But what I really love about these pictures are that uh, it really signifies, or it's a great illustration of what baptism actually is. Just like water guns are designed to target somebody, baptism is designed to target you. Um, think of it this way. For the last month or two, we've been celebrating this amazingly good news that God loves the whole world with Jesus Christ coming into the world, you and I can know God's love. We can have his assurance that we are his children. God so loves the world, we say. Yes, God loves the whole world. This is amazing. The world. Can everyone say, the world. God loves the whole world. This world. And with all that's been going on, even in 2021, this crazy world, 
Yes, God indeed loves the whole world. Well, think about this. Wouldn't it be amazing if there was a vaccine for what plagued the whole world? Well, the Bible says there is a vaccine for what plagues the whole world. The, the Bible is full of statements that would emphasize God's unconditional love for the whole world, for all people. For example, God so loved the world, John 3.16. Jesus died for all, 2 Corinthians 5.15. Which is amazing, it's unbelievable, it's so great. And yet, at the same time, I think it's very troubling for a lot of us when we hear that. We go, really? God loves the whole world? Why is it so troubling for us to accept this? Well, I think it's because our love isn't like God's love. We place so many more conditions on our love, typically. God so loved the world. It's unconditional. It's amazing. Well, when we hear of this all-encompassing love that God has for the whole world, some of us might argue, well, that's not very personal, right? There's billions and billions of people in the world. You need to be sure that God loves you. You need to be sure that Jesus died for you. Uh, the good news of God's love for everybody might not mean a whole lot until you realize God's love is targeted towards you. That's what baptism is. In baptism, God funnels or targets his love for the whole world down to each and every single person to where you can know for, sure, for certain God is for you. You are his, you are loved, you are forgiven, you are redeemed. So today we start by focusing on Jesus' baptism because we can't talk about baptism unless we talk about Jesus. Well, there's a, there's a picture that's being painted in, in the book of Luke uh, it's 2,000 years ago. There's all these people gathered at a river in the Middle East called the Jordan River. There's a guy named John. He's calling people to repent. All sorts of people are responding to his call, and they're entering into the water of the Jordan River, and they're being baptized by this guy named John. Well, Luke 3.21 says, when all the people were being baptized, this is 2,000 years ago, remember, Jesus was baptized too, the Bible says. Okay, so right out of the gate, this sounds absolutely backwards. Jesus, from what we know of Jesus, why on earth is he being baptized? There's all these people gathering at the Jordan. There's religious people, there's unreligious people, there's Jesus. Well, there's this group, uh, this religious group called the Pharisees. And their hearts are tainted with sin, just like your heart is tainted and my heart is tainted with sin. They were full of sin, and yet they didn't feel any need to repent, to turn away from their sin, or to admit that they had sin, right? Uh, and they had nothing but condemnation for what was going on there at the Jordan River. They knew nothing of repentance. They had no change of heart, and they refused to be baptized. They're basically on the sidelines, and they're looking in and they're just judging everybody and everything that's going on that, uh, at, the, at the river. Do you know anyone like that who loves to sit on the sidelines of life and just judge everybody and point out what everybody else is doing wrong? Okay, so you have those people there at the Jordan. On the other hand, you have Jesus there who is without any sin, who alone is the only one who's never sinned, but he's in line to get baptized. Can you believe this? Why does he come to be baptized by John? Jesus didn't need to receive baptism to have his sins forgiven. He nonetheless submitted to receiving this baptism. In, in the book of Matthew, there's, there's four gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In the book of Matthew, uh, when Jesus comes to the Jordan River, John just doesn't get it. And, and here's what Matthew says. John kept objecting and said, I ought to be baptized by you. Why have you come to me? John was having quite a day at the Jordan River. Have you ever had one of those days? He's got this group of people looking over his shoulder who stubbornly won't repent. Uh, he won't baptize those folks because, like, what's the point if they aren't willing to have a change of heart? 
And then Jesus comes along. John is arguing with Jesus, not because Jesus wouldn't repent, but because John rightly believes that Jesus has no sin to repent of. He recognizes that Jesus could do for him what no one else could. And so Jesus' first words recorded in the book of Matthew uh, that are an answer to John's objections. Here's what Jesus says to John. For now, this is how it should be. Jesus says, this is how it should be. I should be baptized by you, John, because we must do all that God wants us to do. And then it says, then John agreed to baptize Jesus. Or another translation puts it this way. Jesus replied, let it be so now. It's proper for us to do this. It's proper for us that I would be baptized by you, John, to fulfill all righteousness. And then it says, John consented and baptized Jesus. Well, Jesus submits to the same baptism that sinners were undergoing. And a couple things are happening here. Number one, he affirms his identity with sinners. And then he provides sinners with his perfect righteousness. This really marks the beginning of his public ministry. Luke uh, chapter 3, verse 23 says, Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. Jesus identifying with sinners. How do you identify with someone? How do you identify truly with someone on a deep level, on a sincere level? Well, you have to walk in their shoes, right? If you want to identify with someone, you have to actually walk in their, their shoes. And that's exactly why Jesus came. That's, that's what Jesus' life is all about. That's what Jesus' ministry is all about. God showing up in person to walk in our shoes, it's not going too far to say that Jesus walking in our shoes, he was becoming a sinner for us. And it wasn't his sin that made him a sinner. It was ours. So here John, remember he's having quite a day. Here John gets a sinner who has no sin as far as his own person is concerned. And yet he is the greatest sinner because Jesus was about to take on the sin of the whole world. This is why Jesus, too, undergoes baptism. Jesus goes into the Jordan River and confesses he is a sinner, not with respect to himself, but with respect to you and with respect to me. Martin Luther, in the 1500s, uh, for which our church gets its name Lutheran, here's what he said, For the, here Jesus steps into my person, and yours and stands in the place of all of us who are sinners, Jesus became a sinner for all. Or as Isaiah 53 verse 6 says, the prophet Isaiah says, all of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We've left God's paths to follow our own. And then this is what Isaiah says about Jesus. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Who would have thought who would have thought, really guys, who would have thought that this would be the vaccine, this would be the remedy that would save this world and all that plagues it? Who would have thought that this would be the vaccine that you and I could receive for all our troubles, for all our uh, sin and for the things that plague our lives and our hearts? Some people think that if we could just root out all injustice. If we could just root that out of the world, this world would be a better place. If we could root out all the hatred, if we could root out all discrimination, all prejudice, all selfishness, all the badness of the world, if we could just root out all of these things, all the badness of the world, then the world would be a better place. That's a, that's a beautiful sentiment. That's a great idea. But what if the idea God has includes all the things that I just mentioned being laid on one single person. A person that God identifies with. A person who identifies with us and yet deserved it the least. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. So from that perspective, Jesus definitely would need to be baptized if that was the plan. The plan was to lay the sins of the whole world on one single person. Again, not with respect to his own sins. He had none. His record was clean. It was innocent. It was spotless. It was perfect. But for our sake, very targeted, God's targeted judgment falls on him, on all of God's condemnation funneled down to one single person. And so Jesus was baptized right then and there by John. John was convinced and went ahead with the baptism. And what we experience next, what happens next, no one would have expected. What happens next, no one could have dreamed of. It was an epiphany of epic proportions. And if you recall from last week, what does epiphany mean? It means uh, appearance. It means revelation. It means manifestation. What would be revealed next about Jesus would stun everybody who was present. A voice from heaven is heard. God, our heavenly father, declares Jesus to be his son. And then the Holy Spirit is seen descending on Jesus. Jesus is the targeted one whom our heavenly father is pleased with, the one who's targeted to bear our sin, to be our savior. So to be baptized now in the name of Jesus. So when we receive the gift of baptism in 2021, and by the way, we baptize all ages, and we're going to talk about that in the weeks to come. So whether you're young, whether you're old, wherever you come from, whoever you are, uh, you can receive this gift of baptism. Everything Jesus says, everything Jesus does is now applied to us. We are targets, not of condemnation, not of judgment, but we are targets of his grace and mercy. The miracle of grace is that God still loves us and sends Jesus to rescue us from our naturally sinful condition. He pays for all our sins. And then Jesus institutes baptism as a way of handing over to each one of us individually all the blessings he won for us on the cross so that we could live life abundantly, so that we could live life according to his promises with the life of his very own son, that we might live our lives not under our own strength and power, but we live our lives through him so that we could do his will and work in the world. And to do that with confidence, knowing who we are, and then knowing not only who we are, whose we are, because we know who Jesus is and whose son Jesus is and everything that he's done for us. So let's pray about that. We've learned about Jesus' baptism today and how that's connected to ours. So let's, let's take a moment to pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of baptism. And like we said before, Heavenly Father, we can't talk about our own baptism without talking about your son's baptism. In his baptism, you have given us a clear picture of who Jesus is and who Jesus is to us. Thank you for targeting us now with your grace and your acceptance and the power of your Holy Spirit, that we would know who we are and who we belong to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will God be with you this week as you receive God's word into your life? We the people believe these truths. God is the creator of everything. Yes, everything. Earth and sky. What is below and what is beyond. All that we see moving. And even those things we don't see. God created it all. And we believe that God created humans. All of us. And we are all created equal in the sight of God. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and was born of a virgin. We believe that he suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was burned. But we believe that was not the end. 
We believe he rose again, and when he did, he ascended to heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. We believe that all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. And we believe that there is forgiveness for our sins through Jesus. We believe that he has called each of us to live a life worthy of his name, a life of sacrifice. What is this life? It's a life of love and truth and grace. A life that speaks by actions as much as words. A life that is marked by his life. And we believe that God is here with us now. Because we are his church and this is our creed. I invite you to pray with me now. Let's bow our heads, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. We pray, Lord, that this word would penetrate deep into our souls in a heart and life-changing way. Send your Holy Spirit to convict us where we have lost our way, where we have wandered, and that you, Lord, would guide us back into your truth. Make us aware of the needs of those in our family of faith, in our congregation. Help us to build others up. May our lives bear witness to those who maybe don't attend a Christian church regularly, that they may worship you as well and hear the gospel message for the salvation of their souls. Uh, we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus, who lovingly gives his life for the church. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we come before you to thank you for all you've done and continue to do in the lives of married couples. We come before you today, Heavenly Father, asking for a stronger bond of unity in our marriage covenant. Father, we ask that you will give us the ability to be, to be a united front for you, letting nothing come between us. Help us, Father, to identify and work through anything that's not pleasing to you so we can experience, so that married couples could experience a stronger bond spiritually, physically, and mentally. We're thankful and excited to see the work of your hand as we do our best to seek your face daily. We love you and we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, uh, the prayer you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen and go with his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Thanks for joining us for Couch Church today for Sunday, January 17th. Just a few ministry highlights as we send you off for the week. Uh, number one, your donation receipts are available for pickup here at the church. Um, so just come by during office hours and they'll be available for you then. As well, we're, we're just not sure how long this social distancing is going to be required of us as a, as a community and as a church family. So. Here's our challenge to you this week. Would you consider forming an online group? An online group that would meet maybe weekly or every other week. Uh, this group could consist of three people up to maybe eight people. Any more than that is kind of a crowd. So, and the challenges of getting everyone online would be a little more difficult. So we're challenging you for the sake of our, our social well-being, our uh, psychological well-being and for our spiritual well-being uh, we're just wondering if you can come up with some creative ways for you to gather together even though we're we're required to be scattered right now uh, you might want to do a bible study together you might want to do a, a book study together you might want to just talk over the sunday messages that you're hearing on couch church whatever resources you need uh, we will help get you uh, uh, get you those resources so that your group can have a, a really good time together. Uh, so that's our challenge for you this week. As well, um, if that's not interesting in, in the least for you, here, here's something else that you could consider for, for the well-being of our church family. Uh, you might consider, and I know some of you are doing this already, so good on you. This, is, uh, this will not be a change for you at, at all. Uh, but we're challenging some of you maybe to reach out to at least one person in, in our church family. So reach out by phone or uh, whatever means uh, it works for you. And then second of all, not only reach out to one person within our church family, consider reaching out to one person who doesn't belong to our church family and just check in with them to see how they're doing. Because the longer this pandemic uh, goes out and the longer it takes for those vaccines to roll out and the longer it takes for life to get back to normal uh, we're just looking for creative ways for our church to remain uh, a lively church and that uh, we wouldn't just be living but that we would be thriving and encouraging one another in our faith so that's uh, that's our encouragement today would you consider forming an online group or would you consider reaching out to those around you? Someone in your church family or someone and someone out in the community. Maybe it's someone you work with, someone you volunteer with, someone you haven't seen in a long time. Uh, that's our encouragement for you today. For our social well-being, psychological well-being, and for our spiritual well-being. I encourage you to talk to me about it if you're having any questions or need any support in that. All right, I hope you have a great week. Take care.